The Bible says that when we praise, the devil shuts up, right? We silence the avenger. Now, I don't think the devil can talk tonight, you know? I think it's going to be easy tonight, you know? We just silence the enemy. Out of the mouths and babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise to silence the avenger. Okay. Um, I would like you to stretch out your hands to me because I need to get out of the way because, you know, I'm human and, you know, I have certain things that might get in the way, but I don't want to be in the way because I really believe the Lord confirmed to me about three times what I'm going to share and I want it to be, uh, you know, I don't want me to mess it up. So would you just agree with me right now? Lord, I ask right now, God, for all that you are to be manifested here, Lord. And if you can use this tiny vessel, Lord, God, use me, God, to give your heart, your truth, and your power tonight, God. I thank you for open heaven, Lord. I thank you for the rain that is coming down. There's rain coming down right now. I can feel the rain. The heaven is open. The angels are here. And whatever you need is available at his table. Lord, I rebuke everything that even wants to get near this place that isn't of you, God. And I thank you. And I praise you. And everyone here praises you. We love you with all our heart, mind, and strength because you love us with all your heart, mind, and strength. We burn for you because you first burned for us, God. We desire you because you desire us, Lord. We pursue you because you pursued us, Lord. You are committed to us, Lord. That's why we're committed to you tonight, God. We're committed to your truth. We're committed to your heart, God. We're committed to serving you, God. Everything else means nothing, Lord. We don't want to squander our life for meaningless things, Lord. God, our life is gladly, gladly offered to you when our heart meets with truth, Lord. Thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So I had a dream. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I asked the Lord for a message at camp, you know, and I went to sleep. And I had a dream. I was with Mike Bickle. Anybody who know who that is? Okay. And we were buddies. And then as I was walking with him, he turned into Benny Hinn. Anybody know who that was? <laughs> and then he looked at me and he said, rest or lay. I'm trying to say it, restoration of desolation of many generations. I'm like, what does this mean? It's in the Bible. Isaiah 61. Okay? I'm going to read that to you. Actually, can I sing that to you? Where's our musician? Do you know when you sing the word, you actually slow down your mind and it gets inside of you? You know, when you study the word of God... And when you gaze at his beauty by, by meditating on his word and it becomes dialogue with song, with prayer between you and God, it brings forth life. The word becomes spirit and it becomes reality. It becomes one with you. Then you become the word made flesh and you shine as a light into a dark world and demons can't stand the light. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do this by faith, okay. So if he plays the wrong key, that's his fault. No. Maybe E minor. Oh, me E minor. I want you guys to sing this. Isaiah 61.1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news He sent me to heal the broken hearted To bring clear freedom to the captives And to open up the prison doors
Thank you, Lord. Okay. So, we just tried something there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Everybody say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. If you didn't catch some anointing out of this meeting, then it's not his fault. Okay? Because the Lord has anointed me. Everybody say, I'm anointed. To preach good news or good tidings to the poor or the meek, the humble, the lowly. Okay? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. There's people with messed up, broken lives. Damaged emotions. Every time they come before people, they're afraid. They can't express themselves. They can't even talk in public. They don't even know how to be around people. Their hearts are just torn up. And you and I have been anointed to heal them inside first. You know, this is three gold full gospel. You don't just get them saved and leave them all messed up. You got to clean up the fish, right? And God has anointed you to heal their emotions. Because a lot of times we think we just lay hands and cast out the devils and deliverance, you know. And maybe they'll go, but what if they come back? What if they have legal rights, right? You got to get them healed. Break the curses. Cut the soul ties. A lot of work. But under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, you can speak directly to their heart, right? For example, uh, is Annie here? Annie. She couldn't get out of bed. I'll save you the trouble. I was going to call you up here, but I'll save you the trouble. Because there was a migraine. And you know what? I've known in the years of a ministry that migraines a lot of times are demonic. It kept her in bed. She, couldn't, she, wasn't gonna, she didn't come eat. And we went to go pray for her. So Holy Spirit, through a word of knowledge, shows Christy some things of her past. She began to pray and forgive. And all of a sudden, we laid hands on her. Simply commanded that thing to go. She's here. Praise God, right? The issue that caused this demon to oppress her for years, seven years, he said, has been resolved and the demon's gone. And because it, the, 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 the issue is dealt with, when it comes back, it can only knock. It doesn't have access anymore. And when it knocks, you have authority whether you feel like it or not. Okay? So we preach the gospel, the good news. We heal the brokenhearted, bind up the brokenhearted, and we set the captives free. Deliverance, okay? Um, there's a scripture in Luke 13, 16. It says, so I... Okay, let me read this again because I sang it and I kind of messed up. So, sorry. I tried something here. He has sent me to heal the broken heart to proclaim liberty to the captives. What are the captives? Those who have been defeated by their enemies and they are now prisoners of war. Right? And the opening of the prison. Now how long have they been in prison? Seven years? Open. Just because the Spirit of the Lord through a just available vessel came and spoke and, and took authority. Right? Okay. Okay, here, Luke, and then it goes on to say, to those who are bound and add by chains, ropes, whatever your bond is. Do you know sickness is like a chain around you, right? You can't, right? Okay, I'll skip the Luke 13, 16, because I probably don't even need to get into that, because you guys have good understanding already. To proclaim the acceptable, the word here is Lawson. I hope I pronounced it right. It speaks of delight, pleasure, favor. Okay. Now, what are the chances? Okay, let me read on. It says, the favorable or the delightful, the pleasurable year, and put 2011 on there. Okay? This, this is the same scripture text as the desolation of generations that I got. When I heard that, I heard it audibly in the dream, and this scripture came out. So I think God is speaking about this year, today, right now, the first day of this year. Uh, we're going to declare, when I'm going to prophesy, and you can prophesy to one, this is the year of the favor of the delight of the Lord. Just say it. The acceptable year of the Lord for you and for me. I receive that. 
Okay? In the day of vengeance, when he crushes your enemies because he's tired of his beloved, the, the desire, the ones he burns for, the ones that he laid down his life and, and was willing to do it over and over, okay? The, the ones that he poured out blood for, he's tired of the enemy harassing, tormenting, destroying, and tearing apart families. He wants to crush them. If you take this in, you will receive the grace and the anointing. And the, you need the presence to carry the anointing, by the way. And we'll talk about that later. Okay? Most important thing, well, we'll, we'll get that into that later. To bring vengeance. That's part of restoration, I believe. On the enemy, okay? Who are the enemies? The demons. The enemies of your soul. To comfort all who mourn. To counsel those who mourn in Zion. Now, Jesus, when he came in Luke, he was quoting the scripture to the Israelites, okay? And Zion speaks of his people, right? And there are people in Zion, in his church, in his body, that are in mourning. And he wants to comfort those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Everybody say, you look beautiful. They say, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Lord says, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the uh, Lord just spoke to, uh, to me to give that message. You are stunning to God. And I like you. Well, I don't look that stunning because I know I messed up yesterday. It doesn't matter. The gift of righteousness, if you believe it and receive it, makes you look just like Jesus. And in 100 years from now, you're going to look perfect anyway. So what's 100 years to God? Anyway, remember you're saved when you accept Jesus. You're being saved in your soul. Sanctification. And you're going to be saved your body. Okay? You get, receive a glorified body. Threefold salvation. But what happened in your spirit, okay, you, when you receive the gift of righteousness, it can never be improved upon. Right? If you, can't, if you can improve upon it, it and you've tried to, it's self-righteousness and it's filthy rags. I don't want to get into that teaching, okay? Because we already taught on that, okay? So as far as God's concerned, you look good. And he said, we are to God the aroma of Christ. You smell good. <laughs> you smell good. Well, I don't know about some of you guys dancing like that. <laughs> well... It's not part of the teaching. Okay. <laughs> okay. The oil of joy. How many guys know there was some oil of joy in here tonight? Huh? The garment of praise. Okay. Now let me stop on the word praise here. The word praise in the Hebrew here is tahilah, which means a spontaneous, spontaneous, spontaneous. It's, a, it's spontaneous. It's unrehearsed. It just naturally flows out of you, okay? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you like a garment, okay? And, and this is this, this spontaneous praise. You know, spirit, um, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will praise, dance, sing, shout, whatever. Like David, dance. Yeah? Okay. 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 Oh, wow. Well, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So <coughs> let me read Psalms 40, verse 3. He says, He has put a new song. Everybody say, New song. In my mouth. And it goes, Dash praise. No. The Bible just says, in <laughs> Okay. That new song. That new song, the Bible calls it praise, but the word there again is tahila, okay? A spontaneous song, okay? So the word praise here, I will enter his courts with praise, okay? And we'll, we'll, that's a whole other teaching. Let me go back here. For the spirit of heaviness, obscurity. How many guys know that heaviness is related to depression, loneliness, despair, hopelessness? 
Oh, man. Have you seen some sad Christians in your life? Okay. We need the garment of praise, don't we? The oil of joy, don't we? Okay. Okay. That they might be called trees of righteousness. And who planted this tree? The planting of the Lord. That he, not you, he may be glorified. Okay. All right. We'll go on. Okay. And here's the scripture, the next verse. Okay. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the formal, former desolations. The word desolation here means, speaks of a spiritually stunned state, okay? Where it's numb. The growth is numb, okay? It's stupefied. It speaks of wasted, dry, okay? <clears throat> and they shall repair the city, the ruined cities, and the desolations of many generations, okay? Proverbs 25, 28 says, Whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down. It's a ruined city, okay? Without walls, okay? And there's a scripture in Matthew 25, I believe, it says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, where does it first go? To the dry. Okay, so if you, want, if you don't want demons knocking on your door, Get wet. <laughs> Don't stay stunned, spiritually dull and stupefied. You know, well. And if you are, you don't have to stay there. There's grace for you to get wet. Just dive in. Okay. I will talk about that later. Okay. Now, let me, th let me, th in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, in the last days. How many guys know we're in the last days? Raise your hands if you're sure. Oh, you guys didn't see that commercial. <laughs> we are in the last days. Pastor Khan will tell you. Pastor Lam will tell you. You don't have a lot of time left. And I'm not saying, I don't know if Jesus will come back in your lifetime. Okay? I'm not sure of that. You know, he could. Most likely he will in some of yours. And most of the body of Christ believes this now. Okay? Because the... Not just the revelation, not by the spirit of revelation, but by the word. The studying of the word. People are being convinced that Jesus is very near. And I won't tell you how many dreams I had about him coming back. Okay? But just in the word itself. Okay? Perilous times. Okay? Many in the church have been desolated by a form of godliness. That speaks about in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Programs, formulas, how-tos, and do-dos. And they just don't need the grace of God nor the power of God. Okay? This causes people to be stupefied, dull, dry, dead. Okay? Romans 11.8 says, just as it is written, God has given them a spirit and replaced that with demon, okay? Because that's what that spirit is talking about, okay? Of stupor, lethargy, slumber, or asleep. Eyes that, add, I add there, this demon will bind, okay? That they should not see, and ears also, their ears are shut, that they should not hear to this very day. I'm telling you guys, there's people right here right now, if you don't get that demon off your eyes and off your ears, if you don't get it out, you stay in that state. And forgive me for being direct, but... Actually, don't forgive me. I'll just be direct. Get rid of that thing. If you're in, the, if you're in a place where God is healing the sick... God is delivering people. You can see demons manifest on the floor and come out of people. And you're still like, uh, I don't know if God can set me free. What? Get that demon out of your eyes. No. No, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be direct because sometimes we need it, you know. Okay. Isaiah 29, 10 says, For the Lord has poured out on you 
the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, namely the prophets, and covered your heads, namely the seers. Okay, did you know that according to the New Testament, every single one of you is prophetic, is able to see visions, and is able to dream, is able to prophesy, all can prophesy, and even says desire spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. But at first says, pursue love, because that's what keeps you. Okay? Every one of you, if you're not hearing God's voice as a way of life, through different ways of revelation, you are not in correct Christianity. You are in a form of godliness, and you are saying, I don't need God. I already know. And sometimes we say, I know the Bible. Well, great that you know the Bible. But has the Spirit breathed on the knowledge that you have? Okay? Without the prophetic or God-breathed words, let's say, all you have is religion. It's the counterfeit kingdom. The wheat and the tares look exactly alike, guys. But the tares have a poisonous seed. Even the tares, okay, look just like wheat. There are people in the church. They look like Christians, but they're not. They have said the sinner's prayer, but Jesus never came in their heart because they never repented. And they say, I'm saved. I can never lose my salvation. I don't know. Have you repented? I and they say, Jesus, come to my heart. And Jesus says, no, I can't come in. There is a condition. We must turn from our wicked ways. He's not cheap. He paid in blood. Your body is a living sacrifice. Okay. Okay, let me just say this real quick. When I say, I, I want to... Because every one of you is going to prophesy. I know that. Okay? Okay. And it's not about prophecy. There's nothing about prophecy. Okay? But you want God-breathed word. Prophecy can come through your song, through your teaching. Okay? Through your life, your actions even. Okay? We, we don't want to get into that. But see, a lot of times we think the prophetic is just open vision or an angel comes or an audible voice. No, most of the time God speaks through simple impressions and pictures that we in human imperfect words try to express and if anybody receives a crumb of that bread, there's life coming to them. You get what I'm saying? Okay. That was page one. When we don't hear God's voice as a way of life, we resort to what? Man-made programs traditions, our own ideas. Maybe good, but they're not God. And it, if, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in what? Vain, okay? Therefore the Lord says, inasmuch as these people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, this is Isaiah 29, 13, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the commandments of men. And that's why the Lord himself allows a spirit of deep sleep to cover our eyes. And he's speaking to the church. You might even be a Christian, but you've been desolated by a spirit of stupor. And now you're dry. And you're saying, God is so far, he doesn't like me. Who told you he doesn't like you? Who told you you were naked? God doesn't like me because I'm so terrible. He wants to condemn me. The fullness of God's wrath was on Jesus. He condemned his son. And he turned his face from his son so he can turn his face to you. There's no wrath left for you. There's no condemnation left for you. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Then why do we condemn one another? It's vomit. It comes out of our... Because we don't have a revelation that there's none left for us. And we need that revelation... See, when the bride begins to feel the affections of the Father's heart, the desires of Jesus to his bride, the burning passion, the longing of the heart of the Lord, 
And they, when you really see how beautiful is he is in his affection and how he relates to you, even when you are struggling in your sin, you're not going to want to draw near to him when you miss him. You want to come closer because you know that he delights in mercy, not judgment. You see? So, the Spirit of God is here. If you get this in, tonight, I saw the rain. I just shared yesterday. I saw rain come down. When I woke up, I thought it was raining. It wasn't raining. I knew I had a vision. I said, like, oh, God, you want to rain? That's cool. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I'm going to get some into something for some of you guys this is just like Pastor Khan has taught on this very well. You don't need this, but I want to just briefly go over this for some of you here, okay? Okay. Luke 3.21. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. And while he prayed, the heavens opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven and said, You are my beloved son. And in you I'm well pleased. This is when Jesus was baptized in the water to fulfill all righteousness. And then the Holy Spirit came upon him and he was immersed. He was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Okay? And then this... Uh, let me ask you something. 30 years of Jesus' life. Was anybody saved through his ministry? No, right? No, was Jesus not a perfect man? Why didn't anybody get saved? He lived a perfect life. He never lied. Never, he loved everybody perfectly. Nobody got saved. Until what happened? The Spirit descended upon him. You get that? If you don't think you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit... Okay? You've been sold a lie. Forgive the teacher and break that lie off and receive the power of God. Because that is the only effective type of ministry that is in the Bible. Okay? Even Jesus, his brothers didn't even believe him. They lived with him. They saw a perfect man and they didn't even believe that he was the Messiah until later. I'll tell you what. You can try to be a good Christian and live a perfect life and all that and be an example, and you need to be an example, but without the power of God, nothing's going to happen. Amen, Pastor Khan? <laughs> yeah. If he says amen, I'm cool. <laughs> it's my dad, you know. <laughs> okay. If the God man needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, why do so many of his followers, those people that call themselves Christians, that I'm a follower, a follower of Jesus, why do they say that they don't need it? What kind of pride and delusion do they really think they can be greater than the Son of God, the God-man? That pride is actually what grieves the Holy Spirit in so many. I'm talking about many Christians. And if you know someone like that, pray for them, but don't listen to their arguments about your convictions of the need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do ministry. And there's so many out there. I've heard of people who spoke in tongues and somebody came and said, that's of the devil. And they never spoke in tongues again. Ten years later, I prayed and I told them to forgive that person and she began to get free again. It's terrible. But it happens. Okay? Why do you think that is? Why do people think that way? Because the spirit of deep sleep. They've been desolated by lies and deception. They're dry and they're in a stupor. Okay? But they can come out. You know, I'll tell you a funny story about a spirit of deep sleep. I had a Catholic friend... And uh, I don't want to even get into too much of it, but it actually can manifest on your soul, okay, but also on your flesh, your body. And he's like, you know, 
Every time I try to listen to you speak, I, 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 I want to hear it, but I, I fall asleep. I can't, I can't concentrate. I, I'm, uh, and, and uh, you know, I don't want to, you know. <laughs> and I said, let me pray for you. I prayed for him. He, went, he started snoring softly, like in seconds. He just, <laughs> it manifested on his body. Who was there with me that night? Okay, Carlos. Uh, no, no, Carlos is there. <laughs> and I cast the demon out and it never happened again. Okay. If you struggle with that while you're in church, you might need some deliverance. Won't, won't go into that right now. <laughs> so he came to Nazareth where he had brought up, where he had been brought up, and in his custom, he went. Is, oh, actually, Luke 4.16. I'm sorry, I didn't give you the scripture. You might not be able to catch up with me quick enough, but write down the scripture. So he came to Nazareth where he has been brought up, and his custom, okay, so it was his custom, I'll do this faster by just quoting it, to read the scripture, right? And he quoted the same scripture I just read to you, but in this text, okay, he says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news. And then he goes, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim captive, uh, liberty to the captives, right? And to do, recover the sight. Wait a minute. Recovery of sight? Why did he change the words on there? Because they're desolated and they're blind. So he just... This recovery, recovery of sight to the blind, right? And to set a liberty those who are oppressed by what? What are you oppressed by? Demons oppress, okay? To proclaim 2011, the acceptable, the favorable, the delightful year of the Lord. Tell your friends and family then, okay? I just really, you know, I'm going to stop you. I believe this year there's going to, and you know what? You know, you guys ever, I don't know, I, maybe it's just me, but I look at the clock and I always see 11-11. What is 11-11? John 11-11 and Revelation 11-11 speaks of resurrection. The two witnesses, 1-1, one, one, and John 11. But you know who moved Jesus to call, when, when, who, who was it that made Jesus, when she was talking to Jesus, he began to weep. And grown in his spirit. It was Mary. What is Mary about? One thing. Martha was busy. Jesus loved Martha. But Mary, she just gazed at the beauty of Jesus. Just sat and listened to his word. She was, okay. I, I'm not supposed to talk about it. I won't have time. Okay. Phew. Okay. Then he closed the book. And gave it back to the tenant and sat down. And the eyes of all those in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scriptures are filled in your hearing. So all who bore witness to him marveled at the gracious or the anointed words, divinely influenced, which proceeded out of his mouth. Why? Because he was, wait, he read this. He did this all his life as a perfect man, Christ Jesus, right? But you know, he was never called a Christ until he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? He was called Jesus until the Spirit came upon him. Christ is not his last name. Christ means anointed one. Okay? So, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, these people recognize there's something about Jesus. But then, what happened? And they said, is this not Joseph's son? I want to stop right here because this could happen to someone in here tonight. All you have to do to stop the God-man from moving and healing every sick body in here is reason with your mind. That's all you got to do because that's what happened here. Do you guys know the story? They tried to throw him off the cliff right afterwards. First, they said, he is anointed, he is gracious. Whoa, what happened to the son of Joseph? But isn't that the son of Joseph? You know, they might look at you and say, man, he's got ripped jeans on. He 
you can't be anointed. And all they got, all you got to do is allow that to get into your mind and you speak it out of your mouth and you'll cut off. Do you know God limits himself? He limits himself to us whether we receive him or reject him. He could have healed the whole entire town. Everyone. You know in the Bible, they said all who came to Jesus, they were healed. But in this part, you guys know the story. It didn't happen. And they try to kill him. Why would the God of the universe, the, the God-man himself, the one who created his people and his universe and goes to his own town, right, allow people, just the intellect, to stop what he wants to do? Why would he do that? Because he honors your free choice. He won't heal you if you if you don't receive it. Okay? Well, we won't get into that. Okay. And then he said, Assuredly I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Did you know that Jesus, who was a prophet, actually just prophesied by the reading of this text? His earthly ministry, just right there. <laughs> Heal the sick. Right? He just prophesied his ministry right there in these scriptures. Okay. Acts 10.38. We all know this scripture, right? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. Hold it right there. He went about doing good. Okay? And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I'm gonna okay. That was page two. Almost, almost halfway done. Okay. Okay. Everybody say, how God anointed and put your name in there. With the Holy Spirit and power, okay, now you're going to go about doing good, right? You're going to see a, 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 a homeless person and you're not going to look away, right? You're going to at least pray for them. Just don't, give them all, don't always give them money. When I was new in this, I was so naive. I gave them all money and I became broke and they went and bought drugs. <laughs> so just, you know, I saw them again the next day, same story. Oh, my, you know, whatever the story is. <laughs> Tell me the truth. You're on crack and you want drug money. I'm not giving it to you. No, I wasn't that mean, really. I'm not. No, but just trying to be funny. But <laughs> Okay, so everybody, point to your neighbor, if you know their name, how God anointed Andy with the spirit and power to go about doing good. Okay. And healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. Because God is with you. Do you know there's so many people oppressed by the devil? So many. There's a lot of us oppressed by devils in here. Okay? And we need to go about doing good and healing those who are oppressed by the devil in Jerusalem before we go to Judea and to the ends of the earth. The Lord is about, listen, the Lord is about to raise up people, just, just simple people, young people. You know what? Seth gives words of knowledge. Seth, her four-year-old son, tells me a dream. I'm like, oh, God is talking to this child. Now I don't want to get into that. Brand new Christians. They have dreams and they have impressions. I think it was tr tr uh, Trin. She's new to all this. We're praying for somebody and she had this impression. And I knew exactly what to do with it. And somebody got healed just because she said, I felt this. I know Pastor Khan, he has this really cool gift. When he feels stuff on his body, he, does, he knows that people are going to get healed. And he just says, 
And he doesn't try to hype it up. He says, no, says the Lord or anything like that. He's just like, is anybody hurting here and here? And they stand up and he just speaks the word and they're healed. It's called a word of knowledge, you know? Now, you're going to get so many words of knowledge if you're open to this. You don't need to say, God said, you wear your friends out. You just kind of, hey, 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 you heard in here? And if it's the word of the Lord, it'll happen, okay? Okay. Because if it's not God said, they don't get to judge the word. All can prophesy, but let two or three judge, right? Okay. <coughs> okay. I'm going to make this practical. Who was at Crystal's house on Christmas? Okay. Okay. Okay, before, what about, and we went to Andy's church on Christmas Eve. <sighs> Old church. Okay. Old church. Uh, we have fun in here. Oh, church. Hey, they're still family. We're in the same family, huh? And so we went to IHOP late, late at night. And the waiter, and here, here's an example. I'm just, you know, I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to be an example. I'm just giving you a simple. I saw the waiter. He looked really sad on Christmas Eve. And I, so I tried to go about doing good. I just said a simple prayer for him. I said, Holy Spirit, what are you thinking of? Tell me something about him. Just simple. You know, like, a lot of times we don't get anything from the Lord because we don't ask him. Do you know what? It's crazy. Now, I am not always this cool, okay? I heard, I heard the Lord told me the word Maria. Like, in my spirit, I heard the word Maria. And then I saw a real, it's not open vision or nothing, just a, a picture of an older woman with gray hair and a, uh, and uh, I said, do you know a woman? See, I didn't say, oh, you know, Lord, show me. I just, I, I didn't even say it was the Lord or anything. I just said, do you know a woman named Maria? She said, he, looked, he thought for a long time. He said, uh, the manager, her name's Maria, but that's the only woman named Maria I know. I said, no, do you know anyone else named Maria? Because I believe that uh, uh, there's something about Maria in your life. And he, then he looked at me with this like, serious look. He says, my mom died when I was eight. And then he starts telling me, I used to go to a church and all that. And then all of a sudden, I just told him, please don't gamble with your soul. And he's like, he got so convicted. <laughs> she felt it. She was about to fall off. She was going to cry. She said, yeah. You know, just a simple word, okay? And then on Christmas Day, okay, we were at Crystal's house. And I was tired. These guys were playing cards. And I was exhausted, you know. And I just wanted to go home and nobody would take me home. So I just like, oh. I'm trying to give you an example. You don't have to be all feeling goosebumps when it happens. And this lady goes, somebody snitched on me, told them I was a pastor. Oh. So somebody was really hurting bad. And these guys, I don't even know if they believe in healing. It's a very traditional church. But they were so desperate, they said, can the pastor at least pray? Maybe God will, you know, change his mind about, you know, I don't know, but <laughs> healing. <laughs> but <laughs> so I prayed for her, and I'm just like tired. And I was just like, okay, I'll pray. Three parts of her body gets healed instantly. It wasn't a healing. It was a miracle because, you know, healings take time, you know. And then... Crystal's mom comes over. We laid hands on her. <laughs> and then I go, I call, go call everybody, right? She starts shaking, like, you know, she doesn't even know. She's never been around this, you know. <laughs> and her uncle comes over. We pray, and people are giving her. Now everybody's starting to give words of knowledge, you know. And you guys who were there, you guys, was that fun or what? <laughs> I'm going to tell on you. And this guy starts crying, okay. <laughs> 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 he's watching this. Now, do you mind me just telling you where you came from? He's been away, let's just say. And God begins to convict him right there while these her relatives were watching Kung Fu movie. What the hell? And, uh, they're spinning around, fighting and breaking stuff, and they're trying to kill each other on TV. And we're over here prophesying and praying for this sick. And the whole family comes. And then this Catholic girl her cousin, the most amazing thing happens. I said, can I pray for you? Laid hands on her. You know, 
I had nothing for her. So I just told her Jesus loves her. And I told her the price he paid for her. And I thought, man, this is not very inspired. But she starts having this serious look in her face. Sometimes you don't even feel that, you know. And I said, I think you want to give your heart to Jesus. And she gave her heart to Jesus. But laid hands on her. Power God hits her. She flies. <laughs> she don't even know what happened. She couldn't stay on her feet. It fell over and she starts, you know, she starts crying and making a mess. And, you know, I mean, it was so. And I'm like, I just wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is this a true story, guys? Okay. She calls me up later. She finds my phone number from Crystal. And she says, I'm going to a school out of a town somewhere. Okay. And, and she, you know, I told her, not, don't tell her your parents you're not a Catholic anymore. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know what happens then. And, and then she says, I want to find a spirit-filled church. Can you help me? Just going about doing good. Every one of you guys can do this. Every one of you guys. You just got to believe this. This gospel is for you. Yeah, you know, I don't. A lot of times, guys, I don't know what I'm. I don't know what to say to them. So I'm like, God, I need help. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? But if you trust in the anointing, if you trust that God is with you, that He wants to manifest His heart and power and life through you, it just might happen. I mean, I told. <laughs> I tell you a lot of fun, cool story. The restaurant owner told all his her workers, stop, I'm going to accept Jesus right here and now. Told all of his, and there's people trying to get a rest. It's a busy restaurant. She says, no, I'm going to pray. You know? It's, it's, <laughs> you never know when this stuff breaks out, you know? Okay. But you got to know that you're anointed. That's all. That's all. Okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, there's this thing that's going on. There's an epidemic. People are having dreams. They're falling into a pit. And there's, they, they're falling into a pit. And if you can interpret that dream, usually you sow a seed or they'll get saved. Just tell them that pit is hell. And Jesus came to rescue you from that pit. And he loves you. And he's warning you. He's reaching out to you. Simple. And it's their choice. But we won't get into that because... That's a lot of information. Okay, I want to talk about th three operations of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Who's also called the Spirit of Glory in 1 Peter 4, 14. Okay? If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the Spirit of Glory and God rests upon you. Okay, John 14, 17. If you, you, I'll just read it. You don't have to turn there. The Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him or knows Him but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Holy Spirit comes to be with you, to convict you, draw you to Jesus. Nobody comes unless the Father draws by his Spirit. You get saved, right? Now he's in you, right? The in you presence, what is that about? Okay. When he comes in you, it's for you. Okay? It causes you to look like Jesus. It's for your it's to work in you, okay? To make you look like Jesus. But the power who co which comes upon you at the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? You shall be endued with power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The power is for what? Action. So how many have the Spirit in you? Okay? Okay. That's to work in you to make you look like Jesus. Okay? But how many have the power on you? Okay? That is action. Do you know the book of Acts can be called the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit? Okay. If you have a fruitful ministry, it's not really your ministry. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He manifests himself through you. And you know, the power, the presence of God 
doesn't really affect your body. It affects your walk. But the power of God you can feel. That's when people fall over and, you know, stuff happens. That's the power of God. But guess what? The power is released from the presence. Habakkuk 3, 4. Okay. Bear with me here because you're going to need this. If you want the power, you got to have the presence. Okay? Okay. The power is a must in our life. Even when we sing a song, preach a message, the glory or the presence will always manifest the power. Okay? When you carry the presence of God, you cultivate the presence of God, your desire is to be like Him, to live in intimacy with God. The power of God is going to break out everywhere you go. Okay. Don't be a power chaser. Go after the first commandment. And then the second commandment, you will empowered, be empowered to do the second commandment. God's not confused about this. We are. The power is a result of the glory. The glory changes our hearts, but the power touches and heals sick body, drives out demons. Okay? Um, I'm going to go faster than this. I need to go faster. Moses said, please show me your glory in Exodus 33, 18 through 19. And then God said, I will make my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I wrote a song about this years ago. Uh, I won't sing it. Save time. When we don't hear God's voice as a... Actually, let me not go there. Okay. The reason I talked about Moses because Moses, God allowed him to see his ways. But the Israelites only saw his acts, his power. Okay? Remember the ten leopards? Ten of them got healed by the what? Power of God, right? How many came back? One. What happened? They didn't want to know his ways, did they? They saw his power. Here, here's, here's something you got to write down. You must have both to be faithful. You got to have the presence and you got to have the power. The presence will keep you in his ways, walking, looking like Jesus. The power will enable you to do his work. And here's the thing. His ways are not given to those who don't know him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Exodus 33:14. he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. You remember when Moses came down from Sinai, and he was glowing? He had the Ten Commandments. Okay? And it says here, Moses did not know that his face shone while he was with him, with God. Why did he know that his face was shining? Because he lost conscious of self in the glory. The glory of God will cause you to lose conscience of yourself. Do you see what happens? Okay. When the glory left Adam, what happened? He saw his nakedness, right? The nakedness, the nakedness of our flesh is what a result of the lack of glory presence in our life. Shame is a result of that. We feel condemned. All that, okay? Okay. I will tell you, uh, we're almost done. I want to tell you something about the key of David. And I'm going to tell you a really cool thing that happened to me. I was on a 33-day, no, 21-day fast. No TV, no entertainment, no uh, uh, 
pleasurable food. Just, you know, just, just, just me, God, and at the time, I permitted myself to eat eggs because I didn't really have a lot of, uh, I needed protein. So I ate vegetables and eggs. That's all I did. <laughs> I had no money. I was a missionary, and I had no income. Do you know I never had income for about eight years of my life? Just lived by faith. So I was like desperate for God. I was just like, God, I, I need to see your glory. I need to have more of you. I was doing what Moses was doing. I just got to see more of you. So I thought I would go to IHOP where they have 24-hour 7 prayer. And I thought I would meet God there, and I didn't. I thought, what? <laughs> so I went to another prophetic conference, and I thought I'd meet him there. I didn't. Everybody is getting all this. But as I was driving in my car, God showed up. I was crying like a baby. And then I, I was about to do a, a new, a start a, a ministry under the covering of the Dream Center out in to the Native Americans, right? And I needed to see God's direction. And I went into this cheap $27 motel, which most of you wouldn't go into unless you're armed <laughs> and dangerous. Actually, you're all armed and dangerous, by the way. Okay. okay. The last day of my fast, 21-day fast, an angel shows up in my room. This is crazy, I know. If you don't believe me, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell it anyway. Okay? And he tells me to study Isaiah 22, 22, which speaks of the keys of David. Okay, and I won't go into more of that. I don't want to get into all that. And what is the key of David about? Is the key to unlock the presence of God into an atmosphere. And most of it is through worship and through intimacy with God. Okay? And I won't get into that because I won't have time because we want to pray after this. So, what I want to do tonight, though, is I want to attempt, or I want to ask God to take us all into the presence of God corporately as a body. But I'm going to do a short, bear with me, I'm going to do a short teaching about the Holy of Holies. Just very short. Okay? Will you bear with me? Okay. Okay. Do you know your body is, uh, you are a body? I mean, you, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Okay? Your spirit is the Holy of Holies, right? The, the deepest part of you, the one, the part of you where God lives, right? You have a soul, which is the inner court, and you live in a body, which is the outer court. You guys have understand all that. Pastor Khan and Pastor Lam already talked about that many times too. Okay? So when we approach the Holy of Holies, here's what happens. The veil has been torn, right? There is no veil left. It's been torn after what Jesus has done. What is left? Why can't we get in? What's the problem? The veil now is what? Your physical body and your carnal mind. And if you can get your physical body and your earthly thinking to line up and your body to yield to the spirit, okay, and your mind to agree with the word of God, you can go right in. Does that make sense? I'm shortening this whole thing. I was going to take a little more time. But I'm shortening this whole thing because I think you guys are really smart. Okay? I'm just, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Pastor Lam says, I know I'm smart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys get up in the morning, right? Because what is the key to the anointing anyway? How, how, how do I get anointed? When you carry the presence of God, the anointing will flow out of your life. It's, it's not a, it's, it's understood. You choose to live a holy life, fascinated in the pleasure of loving God and not entertainment. Right? 
The greatest pleasure is when God reveals God to your inner man, right? We talked about this. It is greater than any other earthly pleasure. And that's what prepares us. What? That's what prepares us for pleasure. Holiness. That's what prepares us for encounters with God. Do you know the word ecstasy is meant for believers, not a drug? Okay? Peter was in ecstasy. That means a trance. And God spoke to him. Okay. All right. So what happens when you try to get in, into the presence of God? You get hungry. You notice that people are looking at you, right? You come to camp and you're like, well, what happens? All this stuff comes and you have to fight through your body, right? And here's a scripture. I want to read it to you. Even Paul, he says this. Where's that scripture? I know I wrote it down somewhere here. But First uh, Corinthians 9:27. But I discipline my body, and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself become disqualified. You don't want to get up to pray. Wake yourself up. Put your body under subjection to your spirit, because you will need to. Because that's the only way. Okay. Put your body under subjection. What happens when you do that? The will, I mean the, the flesh, gets out of the way, right? You get hungry. Don't go get something to eat because you'll have to start all over again, right? Okay. Now we talk about the soul. What do we got to do about the soul? Second Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts self against the knowledge of God, bringing everything through, uh, every thought into captivity to the obedient obedience of Christ. Our minds go that way and that way and we think about what we're going to do. We think about what, what I'm even doing here. We think about all the mess ups and all that. And the Bible tells us to cast down those arguments. Make them come into agreement with what God says about you and about your future. And as you come into agreement with the Word of God, guess what? Your soul begins to clear out of the way. Is this easy? I mean, your soul gets clear. And guess what? You go deeper. You guys probably, you guys probably experienced it before. Now you're just kind of like, oh, I see. You know? You know what I'm talking about then, right? Okay. Then what happens? Even though we're, we're, we're casting down thoughts and all that, Holy Spirit isn't really in total control, right? There's, there's, there's little control still. But when your words become few and your thoughts become few, what happens? The Word of God hits you, okay? Then you start to remember His promises. You start to feel His affections. You start to hear his voice, okay? Maybe a little bit. All the condemnation goes away. You forget about your failures and then you lose track of time. You ever been in the, where you're trying to get, and you're like, I don't want to leave this place. You ever been there? Okay. And then praise or tehillah, spontaneous praise comes out and then guess what? Your mind becomes still. Be still and know that I'm God. You remember that scripture? And then, when all the soulish noise in your body is out of the way, is dealt with, guess what? You enter in the Holy of Holies. What happens in there? You're not just talking to Him. You're having communion with Him now. It's two-way conversation. And then what happens? Your prayers become spirit-led, okay? But you won't pray a lot in there, okay? And you, you might be singing, but it's not you singing. It's the Holy Spirit singing through you, okay? And then you're in there, 
And then you begin to hear and see and feel all these things in that place called the Holy of Holies. Okay. And here, here in Hebrews two eleven, it says, "For both who he, both who he, he who, <coughs> both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. You become one with God in that place. And when we bring our flesh and our soul in to the holy of holies, guess what happened?" We actually truly become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Get this. This is good. We seek God in the depths of our spirit. Okay. Okay. Here's John 17, 21. I'm almost done. That they might be one as you, Father, and me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Do you know why the world doesn't believe that God sent his son? Because his people has not become one with him to the degree that he wants them to be. When we become one, when we become a people of the holy of holies, when we become the people of the presence of God, when we become a people who are so much like just one with God, the world will see the son of God Okay. Psalms 40:10. That's the Psalms. It says, "Be still and know that I'm God." Silence is a result of what? Fullness, abundance, lack of noise. Okay. When God's presence invades your heart and steals your soul, you will yield your members. Self-effort is swallowed up. There's a Psalm in Isaiah 57:10. You are wearied in the links. Of your ways, you've tried everything. You just your way. You you wear, you wear yourself out. It don't work. He's saying, "Get in my presence. I will give you the power. When you come out of my presence, you will receive all that you need." Okay, I'm done. I want like I like the worship team to come up, and you know I I want I I'm believing tonight. Okay, I'm believing tonight that we will corporately together. I know I was talking about a private time of devotion, you know, but I'm believing tonight. You know, when two or more gathered, there he is. There's an increase. There's a multiplication that happens when the body together begins to engage with God to go together into the Holy of Holies. And in that place, anything could happen. Y'all want to go tonight? Who wants to go? Let's get the worship team. And we can even dim down some lights. Did you guys get anything tonight? It makes sense. Okay. You were made for glory. Everybody say that you were made for glory. You were made to be one, to worship God in spirit and in truth, in the Holy of Holies. You know what's sad is most Christians have never been there. They can't even get past their bodies, lest their soul, you know. That would be terrifying if you were created to be in, in the Holy of Holies and you never made it there. Because you never got the flesh or the soul out of the way. Tonight, let's begin to cast down lies. Maybe some of you in here, you think, oh, every, everybody thinks I'm a hypocrite because they saw me mess up. Cast that down tonight. Let's rise to our feet. Take me past the outer court. Into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people, 
and the priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for we your hunger for you, Lord. Cause it's only found in one place. It's a take oh, me to the holy of on. I will draw nigh. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. I enter in your mercy. Consuming fire, we're holy and jealous. God, take me in to the holy of holy. Release the song, come run. I'm running to you. I'm running to you. Yes, sing that. I'm running to you, God. 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 Your arms are wide open. I'm running to you, God. You long for intimacy. You want me to come closer? My heart says yes. I'm running to you, God. I'm running to you, God. I'm running to you, God. I'm running to you. This is where I belong. We're running to you, God. 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 Spirit is 
just here to help you. We're running to you, God. We're running. Say that weight upon the Lord. We're running to you, God. We're running to you, God. We're running to you, God. Dryness, Lord. Dullness, Lord. Blindness. Remove the veil, Lord. The blinders. Away. 